welcome to the Capital Region Work-Based Learning Strategy Session. We're going to give everyone just a couple minutes to get into the webinar, get themselves settled, get comfortable, pour yourself a glass of water. We have an action-packed hour for you. Um, I hope you find it as interesting and, and as exciting as I do. Um, so as you are getting yourself settled, just uh, get excited because this is going to be really just an incredible hour here. Um, my name is Jeannie Contardo. I am the Vice President and Managing Director of the Capital CoLab at the Greater Washington Partnership. And really excited the event today that you're seeing represents um, a huge amount of talent and thought and collaboration coming from this region. And I'm just so delighted to be able to spotlight the incredible work that's happening across the capital region today. I'm going to hand the session over to my colleague, Robert Owens, who's the CoLab's Director of Workforce Initiatives. The work-based learning strategy is under his portfolio at the Capital CoLab. And so as we imagine building the most diverse digital tech work Force in the country. Robert is very capably helping our partners collaborate together and building our common agenda. So with that, Robert, I'm going to hand it over to you. And um, thank you so much for your leadership on this issue. And I look forward to the session very much. Thank you, Jeannie. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to the Capital Region Work-Based Learning Strategy Convening. Capital Co Lab is committed to building and scaling a diverse, educated and part partnership from Baltimore to Richmond that would expand access to industry validated digital tech companies from learners in secondary and post-secondary institutions. Now to support this work, the CoLab is convening its five talent ready jurisdictions for a robust conversation on providing sustainable, equitable and high quality work-based learning opportunities starting in high school. Now, as we begin today's presentation, I want to introduce you to today's speaker. We have Adenike Aquino, She's the work-based learning manager at Baltimore City Public Schools. We had Matt Bechtel. He is the work-based learning educational specialist for the Office of Counseling and College and Career Readiness in Fairfax County Public Schools. We have Keith Rice. He is the program coordinator for Prince George's County Public Schools. We have Emily Carter, who serves as the manager of data and strategy in the College and Career Readiness Division at DC Public Schools as well as our colleague, Lindsey Bryan, who is the coordinator of work-based learning at DCPS. And last but not least, we have Sean Crazer, who is the supervisor of work-based learning at Montgomery County Public Schools. So thank you everyone for being here today. We're now gonna begin by starting out with each jurisdiction to share out their work-based learning strategies. So first off, we're gonna begin with Adenike from Baltimore City Public Schools. Adenike? Thank you so much, Robert. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Robert said, my name is Adenike Akintillo, and I'm part of Baltimore City Public Schools work-based learning team, and so happy to be here today to share our developing work-based learning strategy and plan. Could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. The, the Baltimore City Public Schools work-based learning team came on board in August of 2020 with an initial first-year goal of serving um, our high school population, 60% of our high school population with work-based learning experiences from career awareness to training. Um, our goal for year two and onwards will be to support the career readiness training to a district of roughly 80,000 students from K through 12 and supporting their transition from middle school to high school and high school to post-secondary pathways through work-based learning activities and um, programming that promotes career knowledge and choice and that also fosters equity and inclusion from both the student and employer perspective, lessening and removing the barriers and systemic inequalities in student access to post-secondary pathways. As a team of four, three members of the team focus on work-based learning for specific CTE pathways to ensure that the MSDE work-based learning requirements for those pathways are met and the work-based learning experiences provided deepen the connection to the CTE curriculum. They work closely with our CTE managers, teachers, and industry and community partners in their respective industries to offer work-based learning experiences from guest speaker series to job shadowing and internships. They are also in the process of building their pathway-specific CTE work-based learning plans that will be an additional layer to the district's work-based learning plan. As you can see from the diagram, students are the center of everything we do and we see parents and families as a key component and partner in student career readiness and student participation and success in work-based learning experiences. Could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you so much. 
This slide really speaks to our work based learning vision, which is the foundation to really everything we're doing when we're building our strategy and plans. It's a vision where every student by graduation has the tools, skills, and social capital to pursue any and all post secondary pathways of their choosing. This slide also highlights the systems that are being integrated in our work um, to evaluate and measure um, our work based learning. Next slide, please. Thank you. The elements for that vision require that our district provides thousands of work-based learning experiences year after year. This and the next slide are a different view of our work-based learning continuum that calls for creating a work-based learning intermediary. Our district is in the process of reshaping our pathway advisory committees and our local advisory council. We see the power and potential of these committees acting as many work-based learning intermediaries for their respective CTE pathways to support the creation of work-based learning experiences along the continuum. Our IT pathways are a great example of this, this work. With the volume of internships and youth apprenticeship programs we aspire to provide to all students, not just students in a CTE pathway, there is a need to also create a region-wide work-based learning intermediary, even if it's an informal formal partnership to recruit that help navigate um, orient and train, and, uh, and in some cases, build work-based learning experiences. The ask, the ask to the preliminary list of partners you see on the screen, which includes our District Office of Community Engagement and Partnerships, our school leadership, the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, Business Volunteers, which is an organization in Baltimore, and the Greater Baltimore Committee, and other industry connectors in the region is how can we partner to leverage the resources from our collective spaces to connect industry to students through work-based learning experiences. In order to provide equitable and robust work-based learning experiences, we also know that this same structure and process needs to be created internally for our students. Um, to do this, we're building partnerships with other district offices, school leaders, and staff, including our counselors, special education transition coordinators, our community school coordinators, and our families. Um, we see the importance of doing this so that we understand, prepare, and are and creating career journeys that meet our young people where they are and connect them to all the places they might want to try out on the way to their destination. Next slide, please. Thanks so much. This slide focuses on our higher tier work-based learning experiences and thinks through the engagement, navigation, recruitment, preparation, and management of work-based learning experiences from both the student and employer um, experience and the role and the process that the work-based learning intermediary would, would take part in this work. Some of the items on, on this slide that, um, that we have started working with um, is, is, is YouthWorks. And what we're trying to understand, I'm gonna just, give some background on YouthWorks. So YouthWorks is a summer internship program in our city. It is part of the Mayor's Office of Employment um, Development. On average, YouthWorks provides more than 8,000 paid summer um, internships each year. Um, we are actually now in the second year of a CTE pathway pilot with YouthWorks for our construction, healthcare, and IT pathways. The goal, the goal is to learn from these, path, these pilots um, and explore other CTE pathways that we can launch in year three and onwards. We're also discussing other opportunities to partner with YouthWorks that includes um, supplementing their summer internship program with our college and career readiness curriculum, um, data sharing, and really how can we um, how can we use the YouthWorks model to integrate internship and other types of higher um, level work-based learning experiences throughout the school year and school day. Another area that we are particularly interested in working with MOED um, is the possibility and structure to expand our youth apprenticeship programs by building connector pipelines to existing adult apprenticeship programs. Um, so that was just like high level of some of the things that I thought would be um, interest, interesting to the group. Um, we're really, I'm really happy to discuss other elements of the city, city school strategy and plan um, and really appreciate this opportunity to share where we are right now, our aspirations and really look forward to connecting with others as we do this work to serve our, serve our young people, not only in our city, but in our region. Um, so thank you so much. And Robert, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Thank you so much, Anadika. Great work in Baltimore. Now we will have uh, Matt Bechtel from Fairfax County Public Schools. Matt? Matt, we don't hear you. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Awesome. All right. So as Robert mentioned, uh, I'm the work-based learning specialist for Fairfax County Public Schools um, and supporting the college and career readiness uh, team. 
And uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you some of our current uh, work-based learning strategies and some of our successes from the programs that we were able to continue running uh, this current school year. Um, so we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we leverage work-based learning for students uh, interested in pathways to include a focus on computer science, cybersecurity, and other information technology fields. A major focus this year on this work has been on building a strong foundation for each school sponsored um, and collaborative efforts with local businesses looking to develop uh, future programs for high school students. Um, through this work, we've built internships um, that are directly connected to our CTE programs. And we hope in the future that we will expand these internship opportunities outside of CTE areas, but also into um, other respective academic content areas. Um, with that being said, we're able to provide students, high school students, um, additional credits that can be added to their transcript um, at, to support an internship experience connected to an academic class. Uh, for example, in the future, we'd hope to support scientific research-based internships that can be offered in conjunction with um, higher-level science courses. Uh, this expansion effort will require the assistance of work-based learning specialists at all of our high schools to help supervise, to properly supervise and evaluate um, uh, these these individuals, uh, in addition to the school personnel, uh, school personnel and employers on the job site. Uh, one of our current internship programs that is returning for the and we're very excited about for the 2021-2022 school year that supports uh, the work for our school division is doing uh, with the Talent Ready Project is our FCPS IT internship program. Um, what's unique about this program is that it provides a variety of opportunities for rising FCPS juniors and seniors. And now we've extended to our recent FCPS graduates who are seeking on the job experiences in the many facets of information technology. Uh, student internships uh, include in areas are included in areas such as technology and architecture assessment, network engineering services, integrated digital technology services, ID test, IT desktop management, and technology support services. So those are all the positions and they're uh, sprinkled throughout various sites in FCPS. Um, our hope is that this program will soon be built into our Back to Fairfax program, which is designed to grow our own talent pipeline for former with former students. Um, so FCPS basically has a growing need for teachers and operational staff that we're hoping to fulfill through these different types of programs, whether they be internship related or apprenticeship related, which is what we have available through the Department of Labor and Industry with our operational staff. Um, so basically all of these opportunities uh, support students who are interested in pursuing uh, careers in, in teaching, operational positions, as well as the IT opportunities that are available um, within our, our division as we are a, a very large division that has many different career fields uh, at our fingertips. Um, so we're working with the IT departments in various ways. Schools will soon be able to offer their own summer into IT internships too, which is something that eliminates the need or reduces the need of using outside um, businesses or that IT fields or in other areas of work-based learning. Um, so basically controlling the entire experience within a school uh, using what we have. Uh, this work will soon align to the general education computer technology assisting course that we offer um, and will so soon have credentialing uh, free of charge to students who actually uh, take these, these courses, uh, the computer tech assistant course, uh, since those are not offered in, under our CTE program uh, and receive Perkins uh, funding. So that was one of the nice things that we were able to do with some of the funding uh, from Talent Ready. Um, and then moving on, uh, this year we have been, has been a rough, uh, rough, rather tough year for all of us. And we focused a lot of our efforts moving more out, outside of not just career preparation, but also um, at the basic levels of our continuum of career awareness and exploration. And we did this for all of our high schools, all 20 high schools in the division. We uh, so an example is, is we teamed up with Arlington County Public Schools to pull off the first ever regional college and career readiness fair. Uh, the career fair was held over the last two weeks. The event was directed towards high school students and provided them several opportunities to engage in sessions through the virtual rooms or access content provided for employment options, education, training, and other information that can be used to help students become college and career ready. We had over 160 businesses and organizations that volunteered their time to host and participate in the following sessions, industry panel discussions, resume writing workshops, interviewing tips and tricks sessions, mock interviews, and last but not least, our, our career fair exhibitors, which mimics what the, a traditional career fair would look like. Um, so this, these were great opportunities for our students that at, at the same time were great opportunities for bringing in new businesses and building new partnerships 
um, that will hopefully uh, flourish in the future once things actually ever get back to normal. <laughs> a major focus of the various sessions that we had at this event was investing time and learning about and for students to invest time and learn about and refine their career interests as um, looking at their strengths, interests, and abilities. What can students do right now to make sure they're on the right path to a successful career? Um, and we connected all of this work to our Talent Ready grant. Um, we held industry panel discussions with professionals who served as panelists for careers in cybersecurity, STEM, CS, uh, computer science, and, and we even had a session dedicated specifically to women leaders in technology. Um, also, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have an IT, uh, our FCPS IT internship program. So we were able to provide informational sessions that um, per, were very well attended and we've gotten some really good um, applications already and we feel like we're gonna be able to fill those positions very soon. Um, so that was an, another success there. So overall, um, it was a great virtual event that we're hoping to use as a starting point to build future partnerships. Um, and then since we now have all these new uh, relationships that have started and these, these individuals are looking for ways, these companies are looking for ways to get back into the schools and support the students through various work-based learning opportunities in the future. Um, so, and as you can see on the slide, we're also exploring opportunities um, through our uh, Talent Ready grant to provide summer options uh, through an externship program. Um, and that's something we're really excited about because it will basically, there's two different levels that will be available. Um, and uh, there's an advanced level and an actual cybersecurity le level that allows uh, students to um, uh, learn how to ha uh, do hacking, hackathon challenges, uh, simulations. There's even social emotional learning built in. There's a lot of really great opportunities there that we're taking advantage hopefully this summer. Um, but other than that, th those are just some of the general strategies we've been using and some of the program successes for this school, this current school year. So that's all that I have. And um, thank you so much, Robert. And I'm going to send it back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. Really appreciate it. Good work again. Now we'll talk, toss it over to Keith Bryce from Prince George's County Public School. Keith? Good afternoon, everybody. Like Robert said, my name is Keith Bryce. I'm the program coordinator uh, for Prince George's County Public Schools. Um, my specific division is computer science and information technology uh, programs for the career and technical education department. Next slide, please. Um, so one of the things uh, that we are doing is, uh, as Matt said, we are working on our Talent Ready program. Uh, and some of those things that we've integrated with our Talent Ready program is uh, we start off with a summer bridge uh, that includes an introductory college course uh, from one of our uh, local partners, Prince George's County uh, Community College. And based off of that, we've built in some specialized curriculum uh, that was uh, specifically built off the knowledge, skills, and ability requirements that we received from our uh, local businesses. And uh, that was really the starting point uh, for this specific program. Uh, I want to step away from the specific Talent Ready program and talk about the larger and broader uh, work-based learning. Um, that we have started uh, in our district. That is the along the lines of um, integrating industry recognized credentials, uh, work-based learning and internships, embedded supports and dual enrollment. Um, when I'm talking about specific credentials, we are offering uh, in our programs, uh, CompTIA uh, certifications such as the Security Plus and Network Plus, Cisco uh, certifications such as the CCNA and CCT. And uh, on the programming side, we have the Oracle Java uh, Junior Associate and the Oracle Database Junior Associate. Uh, we have partnered with Employee Prince George's. Um, this partnership with them has allowed us to start creating intern and externships uh, with multiple um, regional uh, employers. And uh, this is uh, an a successful way to uh, get our students some hands-on um, 
hands-on uh, abilities and also to work on their soft skills. When we were talking with our regional partners here, uh, one of the biggest concerns that they had is uh, soft skill development for our students um, joining the workforce out of high school. And uh, so building those soft skills such as communication and team building and everything else was very important when we were uh, developing our programs. The other leg of this journey is we also try to build in competitions, uh, competitions such as the Congressional App Challenge uh, for our district. That is something uh, that uh, the Congress actually puts on where students can make apps and uh, submit their apps to uh, be viewed and voted on through uh, a judging panel. And um, we've had great success with the Congressional App Challenge and it's able to highlight some of the great things that we are doing here in our district and our programming part of uh, everything that's going around. Uh, I think the key to a work-based learning uh, partnership is getting input from all your different uh, partners within your area, uh, taking those different knowledge, skills, and assessments that they're looking for uh, from students from the county and building out a program that's really K through career, uh, building those partnerships with your local community colleges, building those partnerships with your four uh, year and above programs, and uh, having uh, and making sure that students have those hand on abilities uh, that everything is not just, um, you know, educational in the process, but actually uh, work based. And with that being said, I'll pass this back over to Robert. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keith. Again, great work, everyone. So now we'll toss it to Emily and to Lindsay over at DCPS. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Emily Critter Mayberry, and I am the uh, manager of data and strategy for the College and Career Programs Division at DCPS. Um, we can go ahead and go to the next slide, Robert. At DCPS, work-based learning is a central element to our DCPS career education, education strategy. Um, within DCPS, we have 24 career education pathways. We also have 25 NAF college and career academies. Um, our NAF academy models are something we adopted back in 2015, and we are excited to be expanding them, especially with the help of the Talent Ready Grants. We've been able to add two additional um, NAF Academy directors. Our academies provide work-based learning throughout all portions of that experience. Our academies have also demonstrated that students in career academies tend to outpace their peers that are not in a career academy. Um, they're outpacing our peers in key graduation indicators, including on track for graduation, attendance, um, GPA and college applications and other um, important measures. Um, within our career academies, our directors are working to monitor student participation in on-site and off-site work-based learning experiences. Our directors also play a critical part in ensuring that our students complete the tenacity skills training, which is an employability skills curriculum that our students um, prepare for when they are preparing for the last phase of their work-based learning experiences. Um, and our career directors are also instrumental in tracking their students' um, participation in work-based learning. Um, about 20% of our students participating, or 20% of our high school students participate in the NAF Academy, which is super exciting for us. And our NAF Academy curriculum is a rigorous and involves cross-curricular activities um, between our CTE classes and our core academics. Um, my colleague, Lindsay Bryant, is going to share a little bit more about our work-based learning spectrum um, and how that our students go through that spectrum and experience work-based learning. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lindsay Bryant and I am the work-based learning coordinator here at DCPS. Work-based learning is one of the areas that is fundamental for post-secondary readiness here at DCPS. Um, DCPS views work-based learning as a spectrum beginning with career exploration, continuing with career awareness, and culminating with career preparation. So students are able to track where they are on the spectrum each year when they receive a copy of their personalized guide to graduation, uh, college, and career. 
Some examples of career exploration at DCPS include visits with guest speakers to their CTE classes, um, career exploration surveys and activities. And then examples of career awareness would include industry site visits, college tours that align with those CTE pathways. And then examples of career preparation include career ready internships. Um, last year, it's exciting to note that DCPS placed over 700 students in the career ready internship. And then finally, DCPS also kind of provides preparation to support for our seniors preparing for graduation who may have interest in career education, um, apprenticeship, military or employment um, and post-secondary opportunities. And then I'll hand it back over to you, Robert, if you don't have anything else, Emily. All right, thank you both ladies to Emily and to Liz, really appreciate it. And last but not least, we will turn it over to Sean from Montgomery County Public School. Sean. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Kraz. I'm the supervisor for work-based learning in Montgomery County Public Schools. I have the opportunity to work with our internship, apprenticeship, and site-based work experience programs. Next slide. So when we think about work-based learning and our partnership with Talent Ready, we have some really good work in combination with our employers and industry partners. And uh, we've really learned a lot in this past year. Um, and you think about historically work-based learning, we've had in-person learning experiences with our employers, and we've had opportunities in the school buildings uh, that our employers have helped prepare and design uh, that student experience. So in thinking about this past year, it was like, how do we continue to move the work forward and advance the experience and opportunity for students while also kind of navigating the pandemic in this virtual environment that we're becoming very familiar with. So just in thinking about how we approach this past year, we introduced the idea of virtual internships. Uh, this just in working with Greater Washington CoLab, we realized that at the college and university level, students were engaged in virtual internship experiences. And so when we introduced the concept of virtual internships, we wanted to look at it as more of a long-term option and not just a short-term solution to get through this pandemic. I think moving forward, we all realize that whatever this new normal may become, there's gonna be a component in the virtual part of that work experience, that college career component that students are gonna to have to be better prepared for. And so that's where we were starting to build that. Also, when you think about access and opportunity for students, that virtual component removes that barrier. In some cases, uh, students are limited to a certain area that they live in or the school that they attend. So we wanted to be able to increase more access and reduce some of those barriers that transportation can sometimes limit. Additionally, in working with our industry partners, there were two virtual software simulation program, uh, Knowledge Matters and Virtual Job Shadow that we introduced this year and it allowed students to get that experience and help build those career competencies while also advancing some of their work-based learning skills and preparing them for that. And then for some of our students, uh, we designed a capstone project where they researched the particular career field that advanced into a capstone product, which in turn, hope by May, I'm sorry, by March, uh, we were able to transition back into in-person because that's when health metrics and conditions were in a place where we were able to begin that shift. And, and what we found was in working with some of our employers is that they too were trying to navigate how do they bring employees back to their buildings and workspaces and then what does it look like when you begin to be, have students come back? And so it was almost like our employers were looking at a hybrid version too, where part of the student's internship was virtual and then the other component was in person. And then uh, just at looking at how we engage our employers and work with them, we wanted to be more strategic about it. And so we're beginning to introduce a work-based learning platform called Transio. Uh, traditionally, we've had we have 25 high schools in Montgomery County, and we've had it set up so each internship coordinator at the high school works with the CTE teachers, the students, they create those 
internship experiences, like let's say in IT for uh, network operations or cybersecurity. Well, what we'd like to do is go from a school by school model to more of a countywide model and be more strategic about how we engage our employers. And certain career fields like IT naturally lends itself to be able to work virtually or remotely as well as do an internship experience. So we hope as we continue to work with our partners and, and the Talent Ready Grant that we can advance those opportunities. And then when you look at the Apprenticeship Maryland program, that's like an advanced internship experience. It's 450 hour paid experience, work-based learning, where it's win-win for the employer and the student. The employer, when they're looking for an entry-level position they, they wanna hire, they can identify a high school student and begin developing them at an earlier age. And then as they begin to take college classes, they can get on the job training while they're advancing in their college studies. Additionally too, with our Talent Ready Grant, we've been working closely with Montgomery College and universities at Shady Grove. In fact, when you think about the pathway and the curriculum framework, we actually did a crosswalk between our three institutions and looked at our IT curriculum to see if, if you're a student and you have an interest in a certain IT pathway, what does that experience look like in, in Montgomery County Public Schools? What does it look like in Montgomery College? And then what does it look like at University of Shady Grove? And we've been trying to work through those details and logistics so that we can create a user-friendly, easily accessible program for students. And that's all students. And the other part too, we want to increase awareness and access and exploration, especially to IT fields at an earlier age. One of the partnerships that we started through Talent Ready was with Montgomery College. Uh, we have a middle school Montgomery Ked Code program where we partner with Apple and each student works with a Montgomery College professor and they go through a coding program uh, this program has quickly evolved. Uh, two years ago when it started, we had 300 students. Uh, it grew last summer to over 1,000, and they were all virtual. And then this summer, we're actually gearing up to prepare for almost 1,500 students being able to virtually remotely work with their Montgomery College professor and Apple. And so not only do we want to inspire students at an earlier age, we want to create a structure that allows them to navigate the system. Um, especially our students that have um, limited access and limited opportunity. Um, they may not have that social um, capital to help them understand the opportunity or they may not have someone that is guiding them through that. And so in our work with universities at Shady Grove and Montgomery College, we're hiring a talent ready coordinator that will begin working with a cohort of students in high school and we'll see them advance into Montgomery College and then advance into University of Shady Grove. And along the way, our goal is to integrate in these work-based learning experiences. So they could very easily start working with an employer in the high school and then that employer could continue working with that student to develop them all the way through completion of their four-year bachelor's degree at University of Maryland in IT. And then they could be an excellent employee for years to come with that company. So it's a lot of great work, good partnership, and it's been great working with the Greater Washington CoLab on this Talent Ready grant and program. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much, Sean. Great work, everyone. So we want to thank all our talent-rated jurisdictions. You know, working together, we will provide sustainable, equitable, and high-quality work-based learning opportunities for our high school students here in the Capital Region. Now, in 2020, the Capital Co Lab enlisted the help of Higher Ed Insight to conduct a landscape analysis of work-based learning in the Capital Region. HEI sought to understand practices that increase representation of learners amongst populations that have been historically excluded from digital tech and identify strategies that contributed to equitable work-based learning opportunities and outcomes. Now from that landscape analysis, Capital CoLab has developed our own work-based learning strategy. Our work-based learning report outlines the goals and strategies that CoLab, that CoLab will pursue as we work to engage 
in over 45,000 learners in this program by 2025, with at least half coming from the other represented population. Now, our web-based learning strategy report can be viewed on your mobile device right now by pointing your camera to the QR code that's shown on your screen, and it will be also shown in the next four slides. A link to the report should appear on the top of your phone where you're able to pull down the report uh, you know, from your device to view it. We will also provide the link, uh, Destiny will put the link in the chat box and it will be shared up following this session. Next slide. So the work-based learning community in the capital region is rapidly evolving as the environment involves Colab sees this role as threefold with the following goals over the next two years. We aim to inspire capital region employers to act with a shared sense of urgency around creating equitable work-based learning opportunities that advance diverse populations in tech talent pipelines. We strive to increase employer capacity to develop and sustain equitable work-based learning in digital tech and lastly, we plan to create an equitable and efficient work-based learning ecosystem by collaborating with employers, work-based learning providers, educators, and, under, and other intermediaries to identify gaps and leverage successful efforts. Next slide. So to keep pace with the region's demand for digital skill sets, employers must clearly signal their talent needs, proactively invest in their workforce pipeline and deliberately do so with an equity lens, Colab will absolutely unite employers in the capital region around a common understanding of the urgency for equitable work-based learning. The Colab will do this by building and supporting partnerships with other stakeholders, including groups such as Baltimore Tracks in Baltimore, Employers for Equity here in Washington, DC, and Max Potential Enrichment, who share a sense of urgency and commitment to expanding and diversifying the tech talent ecosystem. To inspire the capital region employers to act with this shared sense of urgency around creating equitable work-based learning opportunities that advance diverse participation in tech talent pipeline, Colab will do the following. We will work with employers to identify tech talent related DEI, which is diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives in their own organization and consider the continuum of digital tech work-based learning as a way of supporting those initiatives. We will elevate employer efforts in the capital region and their motivations for investing in work-based learning via panels, webinars, and other public-facing events. And we will convene local employers around initiatives that will benefit from a regional scalable approach. Next slide. Work-based learning help learners gain professional experience before they start a full-time job, which is especially important for low-income students and those with fewer professional networks. Despite these well-documented benefits, there are too few opportunities for students to participate in work-based learning from secondary school through college in the capital region. Collab strength is about building mutually beneficial and sustained relationships with larger employers in the region and by connecting them with partners across other sectors to increase employer capacity to develop a sustainable, equitable work-based learning in digital tech Colab will expand how employers implement work-based learning in their own organizations, encouraging them to engage in multiple and distinct ways that align with their business needs. We will also advocate for work-based learning as an equitable talent development strategy to meet employer needs and to diversify the digital tech workforce. And lastly, we will pilot new innovative referable work-based learning programs with Colab partners to provide opportunities for capital region students to engage with employers in a new ways. Next slide. Our landscape analysis with Higher Ed Insight recognized the benefits of a diverse coalition of intermediaries to build work-based learning capacity in the region. There are incredible intermediaries doing great work in this space already, and Colab remains committed to supporting them. As Colab regularly identifies new partner and convene key stakeholders from across the region, it will draw on lessons learned from the specific metric areas of within our footprint, which is Washington DC, Richmond and Baltimore, and expand insights from across the region. We plan to drive an equitable and efficient work-based learning system through collaboration. We will ensure that there are sufficient opportunities for diverse learners in all four phases of the digital tech continuum of work-based learning. 
We will collaborate with work-based learning stakeholders via Collab's Community of Practice web portal, which is being under development right now, to discuss work-based learning progress and goals within the region. And we will also represent Collab employers in other work-based learning initiatives through the capital region. Next slide. So I think this is a time where we're going to open up the floor for the audience to ask questions. Now, please use the Q&A pane to ask the panelists questions. We will also appreciate if you mention who the question is directed to so that they may receive the most accurate answer. So we have about 10, 15 minutes. I want to open the floor now to anyone who may have a particular question uh, in the chat box. Okay, well, let me start with some questions that we are getting in. So let me pose the first question uh, to uh, Baltimore City Public Schools. In what ways are students within your district currently engaged in these activities? Thank you, Robert. Um, so, and I wish I had my seamless report to kind of give you the, um, the accurate, accurate numbers. So um, to date, we were able to launch um, a Lab Wednesday series, which was every Wednesday, um, our, we did a virtual, basically a virtual guest speaker um, panel. And so that was something that we were able to get started pretty quickly um, in September. And so that happens every Wednesday. It features different professionals talking about their career journey um, and just access to those um, access to those industries from different post-secondary um, routes. Um, in November, we launched um, our CTE Fridays, which is the first Friday of every month. And each of the, each of the work-based learning specialists kind of took the realms of that. Um, and they really focused on um, our career clusters to um, really show students in those pathways, um, what, it, what it looks like to work in those fields. And like, I guess, emphasizing like whether you need a high school diploma, two-year degree, apprenticeship programs that might be applicable. Other things that we did, Barbara and our team um, had a great relationship with Junior Achievement, um, and we were able to do a career fair for our middle school and our high school students. Working with MOED, we are in our third year of offering a recruitment fair to our seniors, um, which happens in roughly two weeks. Um, we have close to 80 employers that are participating and over 200 students that um, graduating seniors that have enrolled to take part. Um, and we were really fortunate to be able to work with MOED to, to do some um, preparatory workshops to get them ready for the fair. And it's not just to get them ready for the recruitment fair, but also as they launch their career journey. Um, another thing that we were able to do um, in the last couple of months, we actually did this in um, February, was a, a mock interview day. So we, were, we worked with community partners around um, um, Baltimore City region um, to, to host that event for our students. Th those, are the, those are the ones that are coming to top of mind, um, but we've okay. been able to do just so much and we're just really appreciative of the partnerships from our community and industry partners to be able to do that. All right, thank you so much, Adike. And if we can ask all of the, the speakers to turn your cameras on so I could go around and, and pull from you. So please don't be camera shy. Uh, this question is for DCPS, for Lindsay, and are for Emily. Um, how has DCPS adapted their internship framework in response to the challenges resulting from uh, the pandemic COVID-19? Uh, thanks, Robert. Um, I'll take a first stab at that question and then I'll let Lindsay fill in because um, I know I will probably miss something. Um, our career prep team did an amazing job when it came to pivoting so quickly. Um, to dealing with the pandemic and the challenges it presented, especially when it hit right as we were preparing for summer internship season. Um, so our career prep team developed a virtual internship framework. That virtual internship framework includes industry engagement, mentorship, uh, weekly work-based learning events, industry-led deliverables, and professional skill development. And so our team members worked with our partners that offered the summer internship experience to help them kind of outline the scope and sequence of events that were included in the students' internship projects and different milestones and deliverables to touch points and touch points to touch base with our students. Um, at the end of it, students usually had some sort of a presentation where they could show off their work or their final project for their employers and other visitors that wanted to watch. 
Um, in total, we had about 723 students that were placed with a virtual summer internship. We were very excited to still be able to offer that to all of our students. Um, and of that, um, I believe it was around 100% of our host employers um, experience a positive experience and so that they would be interested in returning. We also had about 85% of our responding host employers report that they would hire um, a DCPS um, or DC charter intern for another internship. Um, Lindsay, do you wanna add anything to that? Um, you captured that really good, Emily. I would say that just saying that this is also, I've been with DCPS for about five months. So saying, seeing what they've done last summer with internships is very much so been reflected and improved even with internships thus far, especially with the program that I currently oversee, which is the Career Bridge program. So students are, you know, in virtual internships. And like Emily said, it's also a lot of the work that we do with partners as well. So if our partners weren't as accommodating and able to kind of engage in this virtual setting, um, we wouldn't be able to do it without them. So I think it's just that teamwork that we have with our partnerships as well that have made virtual internships just as much of a success as they have been in person. All right. And I would just add on to that, or I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to our state agency that really helps us in running our industry advisory boards um, and really pulling from them and their expertise in those different fields and helping us connect with those employers in the region. All right. Thank you so much, Emily, Lindsay. And to Matt, I wanted to throw a question to you right quick. What would you say would be the greatest needs, you know, when it comes to the work-based learning experience for our students? In, speaking in Fairfax County Public Schools, some of our biggest needs are just, you know, building those partnerships with um, surrounding local community, uh, local community organizations, um, you know, within the government or within uh, smaller, smaller businesses, things like that. We're, we're looking for different ways to do that for a district as large as ours. It's, um, it's been very difficult um, doing that all from the central office level and trying to build toolkits of resources so that schools can be doing this on their own has really been a folk, one of our major focuses. Um, but, you know, combined with just not having a portal, so to speak, where, where employers can connect with our schools, what, rather than going all through just one person for 189,000 students, <laughs> um, just a lot of it's just not realistic at this time. But we, we have goals in the future that will hopefully, um, you know, be able to fix some of those things. Like, for example, not having a portal, what we will be able to use in, instead will be um, what's, uh, we use a, uh, it's called Naviance, a college and career readiness tool. Um, they just released a new feature that we're going to be seeing coming up here uh, in the upcoming school year, which allows schools to put in their work-based learning experiences directly into the system. Um, and then they can actually put in some of their partners too with those businesses and organizations that they run capstone projects with. Or those are our end of year internship experiences. Um, so we're really putting all of our, our chips in on <laughs> Naviance for the future, just because it's something we're already, we are already subscribed to with our division. And it's just one more way to increase foot traffic into that amazing college career readiness tool that it seems to just be um, getting better and better each year. And especially being uh, just acquired by uh, PowerSchool, which if, if those of you on the call are not familiar with, um, we just adopted a new learning management system in FCPS, and that's our uh, called school, our tool called Schoology. Schoology is also bought, um, owned by PowerSchool. So the integration between those two platforms is going to be um, very good for us because of just, you know, connecting students to this system more than what we have in the past, just trying to get them to use it more. And then schools will start to use it more so that um, we can connect the businesses directly into that system. So with that, that's one of our biggest needs, just connecting schools with um, employers. It's a difficult process and we've, we've started small, but we have big goals and it's it, it's gonna take some time to get there unless we don't use Naviance or different systems that we can, can use in the future. Um, but yeah, that's some of the biggest needs. I would also say that another biggest, uh, one big need for me is having um, an actual dedicated person at every school too. Uh, that's huge. I mean, I, Right now I have people that are wearing several different hats, several different responsibilities in the county, which is not the most ideal for messaging. Uh, you know, a lot of things fall in deaf ears, uh, you know, and, and things go to administrators and get lost between the cracks. So um, I'm hoping in the future that we can um, figure out a, a better way to kind of get the messaging out there so that students aren't missing out on opportunities that, uh, that aren't proposed to them. 
And an exhibit of that was just all of the work that we did with our college and career readiness fair, where we had over 1400 students sign up, but it was very difficult to get all of that to work just because there were still students that A, would have said, I never even heard about it, uh, or B, um, it just, I didn't know what it was or it didn't, it didn't interest me. So we need to get more people at the ground level to help students buy into to these opportunities, as well as from the external perspective of um, doing more with Naviance and training uh, parents how to use it so that they're not just using it for scholarships and enrichments, but also are using it for the new work-based learning features that will be personalized every school, as well as um, from the central office level, those, those like the projects that I mentioned earlier, those are just a small portion of what we could do in the future. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Want to throw a question to, to Keith over at PG. So Keith, in your opinion, what would you suggest for school systems to do if they're trying to build new programs that are based on the work-based learning model? Thank you, uh, Robert. Uh, so as somebody has already kind of mentioned to and alluded to, uh, building uh, relationships with your local business partners and your local community members would be like one of the first steps that I would suggest. Uh, one of the eye-opening moments when I had um, attended one of the meetings between our local uh, business leaders is the vast difference between the needs and requirements for students in a small business compared to those that are much larger corporations. Uh, just for an example, with cybersecurity in mind, uh, you, you had your Lockheed Martins uh, of the world that they said they can hire, you know, five or six new people right off the bat. And all they need is somebody to be able to look at packets coming through and, and do packet tracing on like Wireshark, uh, which is a very low level entry position. Whereas if you had a smaller business, uh, you, you only had budget for just one professional on their team and they needed somebody with the range of all the requirements to, for just one position. So as Matt had said, uh, they needed somebody that can wear multiple hats right out the gate and they didn't have time or resources to train that new hire. They needed somebody that was pre-packaged and ready to go. Um, so just having those understandings of your local employers and being able to build a program based off of those understandings would, would be a, a huge advantage uh, for your work-based uh, knowledge programs. All right, thank you so much, Keith. And the last question I want to throw to Sean in Montgomery County, Montgomery County Public Schools, excuse me. Um, what piece of advice would you give to districts working to build work-based learning opportunities specifically in cybersecurity? So this is a, a great question. Um, prior to being in this role, I was the principal at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. And we have an IT foundation of industry uh, board members that encouraged and recommended that we add a cybersecurity program. So when we opened our new Edison facility two years ago, that was one of the key programs that we added. We added the cybersecurity program and then the CompTIA certif the Security Plus certification. And so as we continue to work closely with our ITF Foundation, with Greater Washington CoLab and our partners, um, that's one area that we want to continue to further develop. Um, we have the course, we have the industry credential. Now we want to begin to build out those internship experiences or those apprenticeship experiences uh, because the theory and learning the skills is one component, but the opportunity to engage in the real world application, uh, there's only so much you can learn from a book. And when you get that on the job training and that internship experience with uh, the employer being the mentor, the coach, advising them in real world situations, um, that's when the student gets a well-rounded experience. And then it helps them advance into, let's say a program at Montgomery College or USG. And, and that's really part of our, our talent ready work because we want to ensure that all students have access um, and so we want to make sure that we're increasing access and equity for all students. And so that it's a collaborative effort between the school system, uh, the employer and the student. 
All right, thank you so much. And again, thank you everyone for all of our talent rated jurisdictions. Again, we cannot do it without you. And we are excited to be working with you as we build out equitable, sustainable work-based learning opportunities for our high school students here in the capital region. I would now want to talk to you to Jeannie to close out today's webinar and to talk about our next event, which is part of our work-based learning series, where is we'll be joined by the Department of Labor. So Jeannie, I'll toss it to you. Great. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, first and foremost, panelists for representing the incredible work that's happening across this region so capably. Um, we often sort of talk about internally how if this work was easy, it would have been done before. And I think what we're seeing is both the magnitude of the challenge that we really have to tackle, the fact that the world is sort of changing around us. And so we're having to pivot and build new solutions that make sense. And also just the reality that, that going it alone isn't going to get us there. And so learning from each other, finding these best practices and overall just building capacity in the system is going to be really key. So know how much we appreciate you, know how much we want to champion your work and your efforts and brag on you because you're doing great work. Um, and we are here for you to help build that capacity. I also want to thank just, you know, all of this work internally takes a whole village. Um, so the collab team, Destiny Mitchell is Rob's number two. And so you didn't get to see her face today, but know that her fingerprints are all over this work and we're delighted to have her. Also, um, Lois, Lindsay, and Jenna on our team have just been instrumental in making sure all the pieces come together. So you have that QR code for the, um, the report that we're releasing and our strategy for the region. So Rob, Rob boiled it down to four slides at 17 pages. So if you need a little light Friday night reading, you know, feel free, take a look. Um, and, and know that that is our promise to the region in terms of how we are going to engage to make sure that we're building the urgency, building the capacity and building partnerships to help all of you do the great work that you're doing. So the final piece that I just want to highlight is that this is, this is not the last you're going to be hearing from us. This is really, the, our work is just getting going in this space. So we do have an upcoming webinar in June, the state of work-based learning in the capital region. And um, you all have probably been paying a little bit of attention to what's happening within the federal government around apprenticeship and work-based learning and all of these efforts. And so our conversation in June is really going to be focused on those elements. Um, in particular, I think we'll have the opportunity to imagine how, again, we can be pulling all of these pieces together. So how can we make sure we're benefiting from what the federal government is doing in this space? Um, so that, that is it from us. Adenike, I see your hand up. Um, is that something you want to give an additional plug before we bounce? No, I definitely wanted, when Robert asked about need, I definitely wanted to echo everything that Matthew said and really, really just to, um, use this space to say if we could have work-based learning as a graduation requirement, I think this would solve some of the challenges I know that I'm facing in, in Baltimore, in the Baltimore city area. So just wanted to put that out there in case anyone wanted to advocate that for, for me <laughs> um, and as we do this work. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Adenike. We, we, hear you, we hear you loud and clear on that. And um, absolutely, again, part of this work is about getting all of you together and making sure we're speaking with a common voice as well. So um, thank you for flagging that. And again, just let us, let us know how we can help, but also don't be shy with each other because you're each other's best resources too. So with that, I am grateful for everything you all do. Grateful to our audience for staying with us. And I hope you're as inspired as I am by the great work that's happening around this region. Have an amazing weekend. Come back recharged on Monday because there's work for us to do and we have to do it together. Thank you very much. Have a good one.